Hallelujah. What a joy once again to be in the house of God this evening. Where God meets His people and His people meet Him. I love to be in the house of God. I always wait for Sundays and any day when the, church, the door of the church is opened. And I thank God for all the blessings. And as you celebrate the 16th anniversary of the voice of the Solid Rock Ministries. I want to join you in your celebrations, in your joy and thankfulness, being gratitude to what God has done. There were 10 lepers who came to Jesus one day. And Jesus said, you go and show yourself to the high priest. They were not supposed to meet any man or anybody because they were outcasts. But they saw something in Jesus and they came to them. And he would not ask them to leave, but he would just heal them or give the healing. So he would he ask them to go and show themselves to the high priest. And on the way, they, every one of them got healed. And then one of them returned to Jesus. And he was not a Jew, he was a Samaritan. Everyone else was belonging to the group where Jesus belonged to Judaism. But none of them returned when they got healed from their sickness. But this man, who was a Samaritan, came to Jesus. And Jesus asked him, where are the nine? Ten people were healed. Where are the nine? But I want to tell you, God looks for people who are grateful. For anything and everything, when we are grateful, God invests more in their lives. When the temple Solomon built was dedicated, in the fifth chapter of Second Chronicles, before the actual dedication took place, something very beautiful happened. Or at the dedication, something beautiful happened. Before I share that, I want to thank Pastor Prabhu Isaac for inviting me to be here these two days. And I want to tell you that the joy and the honor was mine, the privilege was mine. Thank you for the wonderful worship. I love the worship of this church because I always believe worship. Hallelujah. And gratitude go together. Where there is gratitude, there will be worship. And wherever there is worship, there will be gratitude. You know, when we are worship, when we can worship the Lord as we only can, God performs miracles during the worship time. I can start with a testimony that happened a few years ago when we had the anti-conversion bill. The testimony that I'm going, to, I'm going to say today is in the records of the government. At the time when the anti-conversion bill has already been passed, not very many people were baptizing or doing anything. But by God's grace in our church, every other Sunday, that is second and fourth Sunday, we were having baptismal services. And we continued that. And one day the police officers came to our church. Of course, if it has been the local police station, they would not have come because they know this church has been there transforming the lives of many people. And so any uh, complaints to them would not work. So the complaint went to the chief minister, the governor, and the commissioner of police, and also to the Ayurveda police station. So they came. So they asked me to go to the police station, but I did not go. But we have another uh, police officer in our church, so I told him that these people had come. So he told me that when they asked me to go, I should have gone. Otherwise, they had the power to arrest me. But then still, of course, since he was there, he brought uh, the complaint to me, copy of the complaint. I enjoyed looking at the complaint. Because the complaint said, 
here, just in front of your eyes, ma'am, that is the Chief Minister, there is this law of anti-conversion bill. And here is a man who is converting a lot of people in his church every week. And I was not very impressed about that. But I was impressed by what they said next. But the people converted by him are converting more people in the city. Boy, I like that. Hallelujah. And that is a challenge for you. To convert. That means conversion means not uh, actually the well, not in that sense. And they, they are converting more people. So when he came and said, are you doing this? I said, no sir. I don't know that. And I am in the same place for 25 years. I have never converted one person from this place. And then the police officer told me, if that is the truth, how come there are about 80% of your congregation are converts from other religion? I said, I don't know, sir. And then he took this list of these six people and said, do you know them? I said, yes, sir. Because they have, they have been baptized in our church. I looked at the records and said, yes. Then how did they come here? One of the ladies that have come there was the wife of a Hindu priest. How is she there? There's another, this lady is a Brahmin lady. How, how is she in the church? I said, I don't know, sir. But you baptized them, yes. They asked me to baptize them, I baptized them. They gave me the consent, I did them. What did you give to them? I give nothing. Then why are they here again? So I said, you go ask them. Will you give it in writing? I gave it in writing. So they went to the house of Jayanti. And then, well, I'll make it very short. And when they went to Jayanti, he asked the same question that he asked me. And then he said, Now why do you go to church? What did that pastor give you? She said, No, that pastor does not give me anything. I give to him every week. <laughs> and then he asked, Then why do you go to the church? You got baptized. Why did you get baptized? Why did you become a Christian? Your husband is a pujari, that is, a priest. Why did you do that? And then she got said, Sir, I'm glad that you came to ask me these questions. But let me ask you, I was in the city, admitted in the hospital, and I was supposed to take a treatment for seven months. My husband sent me to this city. I was in this city for supposed to be seven months treatment. At that time, you did not come to tell me, lady, you come from an out of town, are you able to get, take in, get enough food? Are they taking good care of you? You didn't ask me all of those things. Now I went to this church. Yes, it is true. And she gave all the testimony. You know, one of our sisters was in the, in the hospital as a nurse. She only told her, why don't you get permission to come to our church during the morning time? So she came. The first service, nothing was understandable to her. She just sat there at the back. Second Sunday she came and she enjoyed some of the beautiful songs that we sang. Third Sunday she also joined along with the rest of the people raising their hands, her hands and worshipping God. By the time the worship was over, she had never come to the front for prayer. I never touched her. I never spoke to her a one word. But at the end of the third week service, she felt some kind of a heat coming through her body. She was able to do that what she was not able to do before. She was able to do eat what she could not eat before. So she went to the doctor and said, Sir, I'm feeling fine, please. I think I want to go back. They gave her a test three days later. And so they said, well, you feel really looking better. You can go. She went back to Kumbhakona. She asked her husband, we are going to Madras, Chennai. He said, no, I'm a priest of this temple. She said, you are preaching in this temple for so many years, did not heal me. But I went to the church. I was there only three weeks. I did not speak to the priest. I did not take anything to him. But I felt a power of God in that place that touched me and healed me. I am going and worshiping in that church. So they came and still I did not know. 
At the time of the baptismal class, I asked the testimony, this is what she said. I was healed. God gave me healing. So we have been coming for the church for the past six months. We attended the Sunday class for the baptism and we want to be baptized. So that's how I baptized her. So she told the officer that. Now, this is how I went and joined the church. The pastor did not call me. He did not lay my hand, lay his hands on me. I was not invited by him. I went there and the Lord healed me. That's why I'm going. So the police officer had another question. Okay, that's all right. You got something from that religion. You went and joined the church. But in the past four months, you have brought 60 people to the church. They had a whole account of it. Somebody had complained about all of that. You have brought 60 people to the church. Why do you do that? And she said to the inspector, she was very bold at this time. And she said, sir, supposing you are having a very bad illness in your body, you have gone to all the experts. None of them were able to help you. But then when you went to a village doctor, it's not even qualified to give correct medicine to your illness. But he just gave you an injection, I don't know, maybe just a little water or something. And then all of a sudden you got healed. You felt good. What would you do, sir? When you see people of the same kind of sickness they go through, would you not tell them, hey, don't go there, go to him. That is what I am doing now. I've gone everywhere, nothing helped me, now I am healed. I tell everyone, come and listen to this word. They come, they get saved, they are baptized, they are in the church. So the inspector said, would you please sign this statement? She said, write everything I have said. And after writing there, he said, she said, do you want me to write, sign with my ink pen or do you want to sign this document with my blood? Oh, he was taken aback. Anyway, he got the signature and our records are there. But then when the anti-conversion bill was revoked from the Home Department, they said all the cases against you have been withdrawn also, but the records will be there. As I speak here, those testimonies are in the Home Department of the Tamil Nadu government. Do you know why I say this? When we worship God in truth and in spirit. Oh, hallelujah. When His name is exalted. How beautiful sound this morning. I, I thank God, the wonderful team that you have, Pastor. Yesterday I was so blessed. I got to them and talked to them and I held hands together. And I said a little prayer for them. And I want to tell you, when we can worship God in the truth and in spirit, God will be there to do what we want Him to do. When we can do what we can, He will do what we cannot. Amen. And so, I am very thankful for the 16 years of the Solid Rock Ministries. And so, we are all, we were all thankful. So, when I read that scripture in 2 Chronicles, and one of the little youngsters, little children, mentioned that same scripture in Psalm 136. And you know, they, when all of them had gathered together, when they were all together, they said only two things continuously. And when they said those two con words continuously, the glory of God descended from heaven and filled the temple. And what are those two things? In the second chapter, I mean second chronicles, fifth chapter, the last verses, it says like this, all of them sat together, God is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Only these two things. God is good and his mercy endureth forever. Now when no one can just say God is good. Unless they've experienced it. So I want to say tonight. That experience and expectation will bring God's glory into wherever we are. What was the experience? As they were standing in the temple of the temple that they had built. They remembered the 400 plus years of bondage in Egypt. They remembered how they had been beaten. They remembered how they had been humiliated. They remembered how they had been chained. They remembered how they were not given their salary, but had to do for more 
your more work. When they remembered all of that, and when they stand to stood in the presence of God, oh hallelujah, on the day of dedication, when they remembered all of these things, they just lifted their hands and said, God is good. Hallelujah. And when they just left the land of Egypt, the very first obstacle that came to them, came against them, was the Red Sea. They began to even murmur, is this the reason that we left that place? Well, to make it short again, God performed the work. Moses stretched forth his hand on the road, and the Red Sea departed. They remembered that at that time of the dedication. When they remembered the crossing of the Red Sea, they lifted their hands up and said, God is good. Then they were still going. I'm not mentioning all of that. As they were still traveling, there came a time they wanted something to eat. So they said to Moses, oh, we are in this desert land. We have not, not got, got nothing to eat. God spoke. Moses spoke to God. You know what happened? Every day from that day until they reached a place where they could till the ground and make them grow, there was not a single day. Or let me take it this, let me say it this way. Every day they were fed not with human food but the food of the angels, the manna. Every day, every day. And not the food from the fridge that had been kept for five days. It was new food every morning. We are used to the refrigerated food. But even in the desert land, they were not given refrigerated food, but they were given new manna every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's grace is new every morning. Amen. And they remembered that. In the desert land, we received enough food. And they lifted up their hands and said, God is good. Then came a place, 20 lakh of people, almost, and the animals, every kind of animals. And there was, there was no water. In the desert land, no water. Oh, glory to God. Moses cried unto the Lord again. God said, just hit the rock once. And so hit the rock. You know what happened? Where there could be no water at all. A desert land. Water started flowing from that rock. How many people drank? Twenty lakhs and all. All the animals. Everything that was there. They were filled. And the thirst was over. And they remembered that. And they said, God is good. Hallelujah. I want you to just remember wherever you are this morning, evening, sitting wherever you are. For the next 30 seconds, just remember where you were and where you are. And what God has done in your life. And I want you to just say, thank you, Lord. My God is good. God is good. You have never come across a person as good as your God. Pardon me for saying that. You have not come across a husband that is, that is as good as God. A wife that is as good as God. A children as good as God. Praise God. This evening, as I stand here, oh hallelujah, I love you. My God who is awesome. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. All I can say is like the people sang and those beautiful ladies came and gave a choreography. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Oh hallelujah. What else can I do but say thank you Lord. What else can I say? But bow before him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Hallelujah. 
Glory, 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 glory. Praise the Lord. Then, when they finished thanking God, they did not want to stop there. They said, God is good. God is good. God is good. And then there was an expectation in each one of them. Every one of them. What was their expectation? His mercy is going to endure. Not for the next year. Not, not for the next day. But it is going to endure forever. Hallelujah. When the experience and the expectation met together, God's glory came down from heavenly places into the earthly temple. Hallelujah. I want that glory to fill every heart, every life this morning. As we thank God for the 16 years of fruitful ministry. As we thank God for the 16 years of protection from God. As we thank Him for the 16 years of provision. As we thank God for the 16 years of victory in defeat. As we thank God for the 16, 16 years of strength in the midst of weakness. Oh, hallelujah. As we thank God for the 16 years of plenty in the place of nothing. I also want you to say, Lord, I have enjoyed all of these things in spite of, in spite of, in spite of. But today, I'm also going to say, your mercy will endure forever. Hallelujah. Not for the past 16 years, as long as I am alive. Glory to God. Psalmist David said, I will praise God as long as I am alive. And we are only in Devane to the pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I was asking God for today's message. And uh, you know, several weeks ago, as I was preparing a message, the Lord gave me, I, I did not get a message for the whole thing. I tried to begin for, from Tuesday and I'm ready by Friday to go to my pulpit on Saturday. But this particular week I did not get a message at all. But instead on Friday, to be ready with a message, all I got was a picture of an aeroplane. I saw a little bit of aeroplane. I said, Lord, what am I going to do with this aeroplane? Sunday morning in the church. So I woke up. I asked my brother Enoch, who helps me take me around, take me around. I said, go on the pic, get the pictures of aeroplane, different kinds of the pictures of aeroplane. So he brought it to me. I put it on the table and looked and looked and looked. I did not see any message in that. So I asked him to take me to the airport. We have a pilot in our church. So I thought that I would go and talk to him. But he was not there. So I was there looking at all the planes. Big planes, small planes, helicopters, whatever planes are there. And then as I was looking at them, the Lord began to tell me what he meant by the airplane. Every airplane, whether it is small or big, before they took off, they went backward. But then I talked to the pilot and I asked, is there a reverse gear in the airplane? And he said, sir, pastor, there is a reverse gear in every other mode of transportation. But there is no reverse gear in a bicycle. There is no reverse gear in an ox cart. And there is no reverse gear in an aeroplane. There is no reverse gear in an aeroplane. The Lord said to me, Then how hard do they go backwards? Then I looked again. There is a little truck with a rod in it. And the truck goes to the plane and clicks to the aeroplane. Either it pushes it backward or pulls it backward. The Lord said, Christian life cannot be, do not have a reverse gear. Christian life do not have a reverse gear. But if it goes in the reverse direction, it allows them or he allows the man to push him or pull him 
Reverse. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, as you are entering into the 16th year, or 17th year, need to know that there are always trucks waiting to pull you behind instead of going forward. As we allow them to pull you back, you will go reverse. All you have to say, no, I am not going to allow that little truck to, to pull just a big plane like me toward the toward reverse. I'm going to go forward. Yeah. Lord spoke to me that. <coughs> Secondly, as I was looking at the plane, I saw it went with several bends and then it came to the runway. Until the runway there were several crooked parts. But once it came to the runway, there is no crooked path in the front. Amen. And then you know what happens? Once the plane is on the runway and ready to take off and the engines are boosted, the speed is boosted and it has started on the runway. That can go only up to a certain level on the runway. Only a certain distance. If the pilot decides, okay, I am on the runway, I am going to keep this plane running even after the runway. You know, he's going to have a big accident. He's going to have a loss of life. He's going to have a loss of property. It can only go up to a certain level on the runway. That's what the Lord told me. You can run in the runway, but only up to a certain level. Hallelujah. And then, as he said, when you hit that part of that runway, where you can go only up to that place, then comes the takeoff. Hallelujah. The third thing he said, the church should not allow to be pulled back. The church should always have a forward march. And when the level where it has to come and end the place, it cannot be on the runway again. It has to have an upward march. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, Pastor Prabhu, Isaac, and the Solid Rock Church, your journey on the runway is over. Amen. Hallelujah. Will the people of this church say Amen? amen. I want a good Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your travel on the runway is over. Woo. Amen. Now your travel is not forward. Your travel for this church is upward. Amen. <coughs> on the 
cross of Calvary. He paid the price to put us on the plane and now we are there. Amen. So as the Lord gave me that picture, then he gave me a scripture. But the scripture what I got was very simple. And this is the scripture the Lord gave to me in the book of Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. In those 11 verses, as I read and I meditated upon them, God gave me three beautiful points, uh, three things that I should share. Number one, call to a greater commitment than before. Number two, call for a greater intimacy than before. Number three, worship leader has mentioned many, many times at the end of the worship, a transformation. Call for a transformation. Amen. Just before we came to the church, Pastor Robert never talking and he said and I said the same thing. Somewhere in, any, in the middle of the service, we may not have shared what we are going to share in the church. But in the ministry of worship or through the prayer or through something happens in the church, God confirms as to what the Lord is going to speak to us. Amen. Amen. So the number one I want to speak to you this. I want you to listen carefully. Now this scripture is a very, very familiar scripture to every one of you. Now Jesus was passing by the passing by and he came and stood at the lake of Gennesaret and you know what happened? People pressed upon him to hear the word of God. I like that very much because they did not come pressing him for a miracle. They did not come pressing him for a healing. Well, that was all going to happen. But more than that, they came there with him, pressing him to hear what Jesus would say. Amen. Well, I will explain it a little bit little later. And so they came to hear the word of God. And he stood by the lake of Gennesaret to speak to them. Render Padagi and saw two ships standing by the lake. And of course, the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. No fisherman was there. But well, I'm not going to go into the details of the several interpretation that is given about that. But he got up into one of them and he began to speak to the people. Now there was a man watching it. The man called Simon. And as he was watching, his heart began to say to him, that is not written here, but I take it as his words. When he was there sitting in the boat, or standing outside, listening to the person speaking from his boat, he would have thought like this, oh my goodness, I know this man, he's just the son of a carpenter. He recognized him, he gave room because the multitude of people that followed him. But when he looked at him, he recognized, oh, this man is a carpenter's son. This man is no great big chap, buddy. This man is the child, an illegitimate child of a Virgin Mary. So he was standing and looking at amazement. Why would I give my book to him? Why would these many people would follow him? But then he was, as he was listening, as he was looking at what was happening, that was a transformation in his heart. I tell you this evening, God before handing out a responsibility to you, or to me, he wants to reveal himself to us. Amen. Before speaking to Simon, he let them, let him know who he was. He performed miracles. There were healings. Blind eyes opened. People began to walk. And all of these things, uh, the man who thought uh, a carpenter's son was performing uh, and he was looking at it. God prepares the heart of the people to show who he is first. He is the God of gods. He is the Lord of lords. He is the El Shaddai. He 
He's the only one who came into this world to give his life on the cross of Calvary for the remission of the sins of the human kind. No one else. Hallelujah. He's the only one who came. Just as the song leader said, he not only came down, not only gave his life, there is no other tomb ever in the whole of the world is open except the grave of the Lord Jesus. When you go and look at it, there it is written. He is risen. He is not here. Hallelujah. I had the privilege of visiting this place. And once I have been there, the life of Jesus Christ, the New Testament, or the whole Bible, came very alive in my life. Amen. So what happens is that this man saw. And after revealing to Simon who he was, verse 4 says, Now when he had speaking, left speaking, he said unto Simon, he let it watch for it. And then he said to Simon, Hallelujah, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Now I want also to you to look into that particular passage. In second words, he saw the men were cleaning their nets. And he looked around, there was no fish. There was only empty net. You know, when Jesus walks by you, if you are cleaning your empty nets, that is where you go to. Many a times we walk, wash empty nets. There is no fish in there. There is no catch. It was only empty. So he comes and watches them cleaning the nets. Now he speaks to Simon, saying, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. That is when, praise the Lord, that is when, as many of us do, he began to speak to Jesus. And you know what Jesus is, Simon said? For the very first time, he calls him the master. Hallelujah. He had already seen what he was doing. He had already seen the miracles. He had seen the words of love that emanated from the lips of Jesus. His words were always full of grace. And his, his heart is full of burden. Because everything that he had done to the human humankind, it was always to lift them from the mighty clay and set their feet on the solid rock. Amen. 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 So, he says, Master, I recognize you as a master, but I want you to hear me. It's true that you are a master, but let me tell you something. I am an expert in fishing. I know how to fish. I know where to fish. I know where I will get the kind of fish. I know how much fish I get. I know the time of my fishing. I know the whole of this sea, sea of Galilee. I know wherever there is fish, I know that place. I am an expert of that. I am knowledgeable of that. And I, I already have the, not, not only the expertise, but I know where I can get much. Saying that, then he said, with all my knowledge, with all my influence, with all my expertise, with all my leadership abilities, I caught nothing. I caught nothing. Oh, hallelujah. He knew that he would get a very big catch. That is why he was there. But with all the knowledge that he had, he caught nothing. And then he said something very, very, very Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said one very important word. In one minute, in Tamil, 
it is argilum. In Malayalam, it is angilum. And in it is tamil. Never, I mean English. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Would you please shout with me? Nevertheless. Nevertheless. This is not a shout. <laughs> Can you shout with me? Nevertheless. Nevertheless. I'm trying my expertise. I'm trying my knowledge. I've tried my familiarity. I've tried my influences. With all of that, and all the night I tried, I caught nothing. Oh, hallelujah. Then he said, nevertheless. One more time, please. Nevertheless. One more time, please. Nevertheless. I am asking on the 17th birthday of this church, that you are going to say, it's not my influence, it's not my uh, knowledge, it's not my familiarity, it's not how I stand, the, in this, my status in the society. I have all of these things. Everything is there. But on the 17th birthday of our church, I'm going to do something. I'm going to say, nevertheless. Uh, Hallelujah. Nevertheless, and you know what he said? Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Where am, I, where am I going to let down the net? In the same place where I did not get anything. In the same place, I used my expertise. In the same place, I used my familiarity. In the same place where my net was empty. Hallelujah. There, what am I going to do? Nevertheless, at your word. At your word. Come on, now shout with me. At your word. 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 What he said? At your word. At your word, I will not throw my net. Say it again for me. 
Then he pulled it back. I want you to get into the message. Then he pulled it back. What happened? It was so easy to me. No. Was it easy? Hallelujah. All light, everywhere, all through the places where they tried to fish. The net came easy. The net came easy. And it was an empty net. But when they make the commitment to what God said, at your word, at your word, at your word, I am making my commitment. And you know, when they pull the net, it was full of fish. The net was full of fish until it might tear down. I want to tell you this evening, if there is a commitment to you, what are the commitments I said? First to God, second to your family, third to your church, third to your worship. Third, and, and put, let the list go on. I want you to write a list of things that you want to make a commitment to God. And when you make that commitment and say to Him, Nevertheless, Lord, I am going to let the net down at your word. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, assure you, promise you from the word of God, you will never have an empty net thereafter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will never wash an empty net. You will never wash an empty net in the family. You will never wash an empty net in your health. You will never wash an empty net in any area of your life. You are neck when it is being pulled. It will be heavy. It will be full. It will be full of all the blessings that God has showered upon you. Hallelujah. God's word is never a negative approach. God's approach is always positive. You know what he said standing at the grave of Lazarus? Hallelujah. He's been dead four days. Stinking. Sister said, don't open it. Because we cannot stand the stink. It is they who want to have the grave opened. Four days they have not seen the beloved brother. They said, no, 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 don't open it. But Jesus said, open it. At your word. <laughs> Hallelujah. At his word, they opened it. And you know, when he's standing there, everyone was covering their noses. There was only one person who did not have a mask on their nose. That was Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even Lazarus' brothers and sisters were covering their noses. But here is one person. He's not covering. And there he said, If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Wherever there is commitment, there is always be the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. In any situation, it is in the ministry situation, family situation, in our ministry situation, in any situation, when there is a commitment and when there is a faith goes along with the commitment, there will be glory. Hallelujah. My time is running very, very fast. So, I have more things to say. Praise the Lord. So, that is, but so I am stopping there. Now, at the coming, when I say at the commitment, I need to say some very important things. I will say that anyway because as I said yesterday, I don't say anything until the Holy Spirit tells me. And when the Holy Spirit tells me, I don't fear the crowd. Hallelujah. I thank God for Pastor Prabhu, Prabhu Isaac. He's so gracious to invite me to come. But after saying what I say now, if he says, I don't want to invite this fellow anymore, thank God for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if you decide, well, is this the thing that I want? I came all the way from there and there to here. One more time I hear Pratap Singh. I'm not going there. I don't care. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Because at his word, what did Jesus say in John 3, 33? 
except a man be born again, he will not see the kingdom of Okay, right? To see the kingdom of God, not to enter, but to see the kingdom of God, one must be born again, right? Amen? Amen. And who said that? Jesus said it. And you want Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to be born again. I want to live as I want to live. I like the way I live. I like the way I sing. I like the way that I do things. My life is being destroyed, but I don't care. I want to live the way I want to live. But then he says, nevertheless, I would come and to allow myself to be born again. Hallelujah. And you are. Let me be good. No, most of you will. All the people from India are abroad. What did you do to do first to come to this country? Or to any country? What did you do? Passport. Hallelujah. First of all, you have to have a passport even for the idea of a desire to see any country. Forget you say, there's a little small island. 500 miles from us, Sri Lanka. You cannot just go and land in Sri Lanka. What do you have? Hallelujah. Just for the hope of getting into that country, I need to have a passport. Okay, now you have a passport. Can you step into Sri Lanka? No. What is the next thing? Jesus said, my fifth words. Nevertheless, nevertheless, 
Hallelujah. In the last days, I will pour my spirit upon you. All flesh. The Pentecost, the Church of God, the Lutheran Church, the Baptist Church, the Methodist Church, every flesh, wherever there is a flesh, I will pour my spirit upon all the flesh. Then it says, okay, now the spirit is over, the watch is over. So you got the visa, you got the ticket. Amen? I thank God for everyone that has a passport. I thank God for everyone that has a visa. I thank God for everyone that has a ticket. But will you be able to go? With these three things, can you fly? I'm just giving you a little analogy. Okay. What did you do after getting your ticket? Well, you checked in. Well, because your visa is in order, your ticket is in order. So you checked in. Then what then? Go through the immigration. Amen. And no, immigration is no easy thing anymore. Hallelujah. They can see you from top to bottom. <laughs> Right? Amen? No. See, I'm just giving an analogy according to the word of God. Okay? When you go into the immigration, you will be checked thoroughly from head to foot. You know? When you say, they say, 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 say something. A little blade, a little pin. They ask you to come out again. They ask you to remove your coat. They ask you again for a tap. Why? You will not be allowed to enter into the plane with any of these things. Hallelujah. Immigration. Hallelujah. Now immigration is according to the word of God. At your word. At your word. Amen? Am I stepping on anybody's toes? Well, if I step, let it pain. Until you get to do what God's word says. Amen? So, what happened? <coughs> you know, I've got two more points. So I'm just I'm the halfway mark on the first point. But I will lose. So, immigration is gone. So, after the immigration, what do you do? You must take it granted. They have your boarding pass and the announcement is made, then what do you do? Go and sit in And you know there are so many planes at the airport, right? Not one or two. Where will you sit? Which plane will you can go and sit in? The plane that has that is going to fly you to the destination. You can go for control of another plane. You can play the card now. Then you can. All right, okay. I can go for the card now. Where is that? Hallelujah. Now I'm talking to you from my personal experience and according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Where your plane is destined to and what your ticket says where you're going. You will go and sit in that. Amen? Amen. And I want to tell you, the plane is the church where you are members of. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Don't carry a ticket of Air India and go and sit in the Lufthansa. They will chuck you out. Hallelujah. Amen. Either they will chuck you out or you will not reach your destination. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And you will sit in a plane where it does not have a snack. Here you come to the there. There's a little snack in the plane. It's not going to travel for another 15 hours. You know what will you do? You will talk to every office. In the airplane with you today. In that company with you You want to be in a plane where it will fly you to the destination. Amen? And finally, in that other 
analogy. Who is the pilot today? Jesus is not the pilot of the plane. Amen? God has appointed pilots. For Solid Rock City Church. Hallelujah. God has appointed for a voice as the pilot. For the Trinity Full Gospel Church. God has appointed me as the pilot. And the air 